We're on with Alan Wellenstein, the founder and leader of Data Art Solution Design Practice. And um, Alan agreed to share with us his observations of how projects can start and progress in strange times like this. Thanks, Alan, for giving us a few minutes. Of course. Thanks for having me. So uh, in in this crisis world that we're all living, you know, the first instinct that all of us have is just freeze in space, not do anything, see how situation develops, not spend any money and so on. In business, that's not doing anything is the luxury that uh, we cannot really afford, although sometimes it feels like the only thing that we can do. It's very rarely the right thing to do. So in your observation, you know, clients who... Uh, need to do things. They, they have to deal with that, this uncertainty, how to plan a new project, how to think about the business case, even though so much is unknown about the future. What do you see in conversations with your clients? How do people approach this and what kind of advice are you giving them? I would say largely the the cases that we are seeing in the practice now fall into two buckets. Um, we have some clients who have very urgent tactical needs as a result of seeing their demand either crash or in some cases go up beyond what they're able to to deal with and they need to very very quickly do things here is where the expertise in the solution design group which is all based on um ideation, uh, innovating, quickly prototyping, testing hypotheses are quite useful because we can come in, analyze what the problem is, quickly get aligned with their stakeholders, and then test various approaches very, very rapidly of how we might be able to help them. So it's sort of this like innovation lab sort of uh, product accelerator to help those, those clients who find themselves pretty urgently needing to make changes. Um, the other type of clients are the type of clients who we've traditionally serviced in the past too, which have a transformation. Um, and those themselves fall into two buckets, right? They see they need to modernize. They see that the competitors, especially startups around them, are much more nimble and starting to eat their lunch. And those fall into two buckets, some where they're capitalized well enough and they're able to invest through this, in which case they're actually in a great position because they can use this time to invest in the future for when they come out of this. And then we have the other side where they know they need this transformation, but unfortunately they're struggling and are in a cost cutting reduction. So other than, you know, providing advice and helping, we're a little bit more limited. But what I'd say is I haven't actually seen the needs that companies are facing change in the time of COVID, the needs of what everyone is shooting for now. Uh, business agility is probably the best term. How do we um, shorten the time between someone having a great idea for how we can help a client and getting that into production? Um, that hasn't changed. It's not going to change after COVID. Um, the, the, the things that those companies needed to do before COVID are the same things that they need to do now. And they're not just technical, right? Right there is much about changing their legacy processes and getting their organization used to what it means to be an agile organization. Um, and we have a number of clients who we're working with who uh, are, are fortunate enough with their cash position to be able to invest through this um, and others who unfortunately aren't so lucky. It seems like, the, if anything, on the positive side of this crisis has demonstrated is the importance of shift towards new generation digital services, serving one client via digital channels, making sure that the experience that is delivered by their device is not inferior to anything they would get in the physical space, a bank branch or an office of, of some kind. Um, so we, we, I, I think it's reasonable to expect that companies who are in position to invest will invest, if anything, even more aggressively in developing those uh, digital services. Do you see the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think that the recognition of the need to move towards digital, more customer-centric, less friction, more efficiency has changed, but the urgency for sure has. Mm -hmm. um, before COVID, the urgency was, wow, we see these startups coming into our space and they're starting to behave in this way that if we don't catch up, we're going to have a problem. And now post-COVID, especially with so many business transactions moving to an online space, companies who haven't made that shift yet are under intense pressure to do it quickly. What about shift to cloud? Do you see a lot of your clients find sort of new appreciation for cloud as this 
essential component of making sure your systems are resilient, whereas there was used to be a time where cloud was primarily an economic uh, consideration, then there was a wave of concern about security, and now I think this crisis added a whole whole uh, dimension of resiliency and not being dependent on any physical space for, for workers or for your infrastructure uh, for continuous op op operation. Are you seeing a spike in conversations about cloud among your clients? Yeah, absolutely. And and it's interesting too. It's not just like you said the um uh the efficiency of the cloud from a cost and performance perspective, but also with work from home, it's putting a lot of pressure on corporate VPNs which become the choke point where they thought they were you know, leveraging the cloud, but with everyone working from home and now coming through a choke point of a corporate VPN, they're recognizing that they still have work to do in terms of really taking advantage of, of what the cloud has to offer. Mm -hmm. Has your approach to designing systems changed at all? Meaning you used to design system to operate in what, in quote unquote, normal set of circumstances where you could forecast relatively with, with relative certainty, what kind of user base you'll have, what kind of load parameters, what kind of security infrastructure. And now the the universe is showing us that all of these assumptions are at the very least incomplete and maybe completely, completely wrong. And so it seems like when designing a new project or program or system, you have to uh, take uh, to consider a whole bunch of things that you could not even conceive of before. Is there an element of this dealing with an uncertainty from this perspective? Yeah, not so much in terms of how it's changed our approach, but how it's changed the conversation. I'm finding that I'm spending a lot less time convincing clients that they need to plan for the unknown and plan for the uncertainty ahead of them. And the message about really investing as much in the process of how they design and build software as the specific architecture of what they're building. Now, when I make the point of like, look, we can all make certain assumptions of what tomorrow is going to look like, but really the people who win in business are the people who are incredibly nimble and are able to change when demand changes. That conversation now has, <laughs> goes a lot differently. People sort of intrinsically understand how important it is to focus as much on their process as the specifics of what they're building. Mm -hmm. And on the subject of in endurance or how enduring those systems will be in the future, I remember when I was starting the business 20 years ago, you have a conversation with a new client and you plan for whatever you are creating together with them to last five, maybe 10 years. It was a long-term investment. Now, increasingly over the last few years, we're advising clients to shorten their horizons a lot more and, and plan for systems to be replaced or at least modernized much more frequently. Sometimes I've heard of, of projects being built to be only rebuilt in a couple, couple years down, down the road. Changes the mindset entirely. Do you think this crisis or everything else that's going on around us will further compress these timelines? The, the notion of durability, it seems, changes before our eyes. Yeah, I don't know if I necessarily agree that it's shortening the time between when you build and rebuild a system. I think that the, the players who have been immensely successful in using technology to unlock opportunities, the thing that they've gotten right is the process is the recognition that actually they're never done. It's not correct to think of when are we done with this process and when is it time to build the new one, but rather to focus on the processes within their organization, across departments, of how ideas are prioritized, how they make it into the backlog, and to focus as much on the velocity of their organization, the process by which these ideas more and more uh, be become um, uh, unlocked, uh, and and the, in particular the cooperate. This is the thing that I'm that I'm seeing shifting is that enterprises, in particular, with very siloed departments, where it used to be three, four years ago, it was not at all uncommon for us to work with one department and then say, oh, I know it makes sense to integrate with that, but boy, that's so difficult to work with those people. Organizations are really starting to see how much that's going to get in their way for what all of their startup. Uh, competitors are doing. And and we're starting to see a lot of value. Organizations are starting to see a lot of value with getting the dance correct between the various departments so that you're not building something and then you're done, but you're building something and you're focusing on the process by which you're building it and changing it and changing it and changing it and changing it. 
All right, this is great. Uh, Alan, uh, last but not least, any prediction on when you and I can physically sit in the same room and do a client workshop? What's your what's your take on timing? Um, I read a sobering article over the weekend um, that suggests maybe one or two people sitting in a room together is, is, is going to be within a few months, but larger groupings of people, unfortunately, may be, may be sometime in the future. But, you know, as somebody who... Uh, doesn't love traveling. It's it's not the worst thing in the world that people get used to being productive remotely. All right. Well, the world keeps uh, keeps working and keeps uh, developing. And thanks for uh, some some time and your thoughts, Alan. Good luck. My pleasure. Thank you so much. All right. Take care, Alexa. Mm-hmm.